Do you want to start your home server, but you're concerned about security? I spent the last several months researching and implementing top of the line technologies to secure my home server so I can set up anything I want without needing to fear. In this video, you'll be learning about the different ways you can expose your home server to the internet and how you can properly secure it. Welcome to Tenovin Tech. I'm Tenovin, and I believe open source software is our future. Local AI models are getting better and better. It's time for us to start looking at how we can host these things on our own home servers and be able to secure it in the proper way. Security is often one of the first things people think about when they're thinking about setting up a home server. And most of the time, it is very confusing to start. So we'll begin with an overview of the different levels of exposure and how to adequately protect you. You should know I am not a security expert. I will be showing you what I've been able to research and implement for my own home server and explain to you what each part does and why you will want it too. Let's get started. All right, let's dive into the core of securing your home server. We'll start by understanding the different levels of exposure and then move on to security you can implement to keep your server safe. First off, don't expose at all. The simplest way to secure your home server is to keep it entirely within your local network. This means no external access, eliminating the risk of internet-based attacks. It's perfect for services you only need to access from home. Two, expose through VPN. If you need to access your server remotely, using a virtual private network or VPN is a secure option. A VPN creates a private encrypted tunnel between your device and your home network, ensuring that only you can access your server securely. Three, Exposed directly to the internet. For those who require direct access to their server from anywhere, exposing it to the internet is an option. However, this method increases vulnerability, so it's crucial to implement robust security measures to protect your server from potential threats. Now let's explore the different security measures you can put in place to safeguard your home server. Let's say you're running Docker on your home server and you have containers for applications such as Homepage, Portainer, Watchtower, and a couple others. You want to be able to access these applications outside of your local network, but you don't want everyone to be able to access it, just a few of your devices. Then VPN is what you want. Using a VPN ensures that you only have access to your server over a secure encrypted connection. This adds a strong layer of protection, especially if you're accessing your server from public networks. Now let's say you're running a personal cloud server, AI, or website that you want to be able to access from anywhere, and not just you, but those around you. This is where you're going to want to secure a home server and expose it to the internet. As you are running Docker on the server, there are security vulnerabilities that will need to be addressed. Some applications, such as Portainer and Watchtower, require access to the Docker socket. Hackers can gain root or host access if they compromise a container that uses a Docker socket. By using a Docker socket proxy, you can prevent hackers from gaining access. This isolates your containers, adding an extra barrier against potential attacks. Furthermore, implementing security options within Docker containers helps prevent attackers from elevating their privileges if they manage to breach a container. This ensures that each container operates within its own secure environment. But Docker still has a large attack surface with all of these applications having different ports to access them. If a hacker knew the Docker network address and port of a container, they could go around your security by directly accessing the containers. This is why setting up uncomplicated firewall or UFW is essential for controlling incoming and outgoing traffic. Docker will typically override any firewall on the server, but you can get UFW to properly work with Docker if you configure it correctly. UFW blocks unauthorized access attempts to your Docker containers and only allows the central ports like SSH, HTTP, and HTTPS to remain open. SSH is what you will use to remotely access your server's command line. HTTP and HTTPS are for the reverse proxy to handle. Using a reverse proxy like traffic, you can further reduce your server's attack surface to only a few ports. It allows you to manage and route web traffic efficiently, configure middleware for additional security, implement IP whitelisting, and set up rate limiting to prevent abuse. While this reduces our attack surface, the main entry points are still not secure enough. Implementing strong authentication with tools like Athelia ensures robust identity management, authorization, and encryption. This means only authorized users can access your server and all data transfers are securely encrypted. We'll set this as a reverse proxy middleware to require users to go through authentication before gaining access to any of our services. This may feel like enough security, but we would still be missing an important part. Continuous monitoring is key to maintaining server security. Applications like CrowdSec help by monitoring traffic, 
using bouncers to block malicious actors, stopping known attackers, and preventing DDoS attacks. It keeps an eye on suspicious activities and responds in real time to threats. So we'll set this as a reverse proxy middleware in front of authentication to prevent various attacks before they even get to our authentication layer. Finally, using a custom domain not only makes accessing your server easier, but also hides your IP address. This adds an additional layer of privacy and security by keeping your server's location obscured from potential attackers. And with that, you have properly secured your home server while getting access to it from anywhere. I know this might feel like a lot to set up, but it is worth the feeling of security and peace of mind. So I've put together Citadel, a script to help streamline the whole process. If you plan to securely expose your home server to the internet, Citadel is for you. It will guide you through securing your home server using the exact methods shown in this video. You can find the link in the description below. And this would be a great way to support me and my channel so I can keep making home server videos for you. Use code CITADEL to get 20% off of your purchase, only available for a limited time. If you don't want or have money to spend, stay tuned for my future videos where I will show you how to set all of this up step by step. Just hit the like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of them. Which part of the security setup shown in this video is the most important and why? Let me know in the comments below. Now that you know how to secure your home server, the next step is making sure you have the right hardware to run it. If you're just getting started or looking for an upgrade, check out my video on choosing the best hardware for your first home server. It'll help you choose the right setup based on your needs. Click here to watch it now.